from Kemper Arena in Kansas City. It's a 12th annual McDonald's All-American basketball game. A sneak preview of the guys who will impact the college and pro ranks in the next decade. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, and I'm with Dick Vitale. And, Dick, this really gives us an insight on what to expect next year. Gary, it's bye-bye to the Sean Elliott's, the Danny Ferries, and the Stacey Kings. But hello, everybody. Shaquille O'Neal, Douglas Edwards, Kenny Anderson. A host of new names will be on the collegiate scene. The beat goes on and on. Well, we highlighted two guys, O'Neal and Edwards. Tell me about the two of them. Shaquille O'Neal's a big power inside player. He'll be at L LSU, and they're going to be really be excited. They'll have the twin towers, O'Neal and Roberts. The other guy you talk about, Douglas Edwards, I guess can be really described as Mr. Versatility. He can play inside and outside. He is reminiscent of a guy that played in North Carolina by the name of Jamin James Worthy. There were three guys coming into this classic that are unsigned. Now it's down to one. You've got a couple of scoops. Let's go first to Deion Thomas. All right, we'll play a little game here, a little scoop game. Hey, get excited, Lou Henson. Lou do himself because Deion Thomas will sign with Illinois, no doubt about it, tomorrow. And Deion Thomas is one of the top five players in the nation. You saw a question mark against Illinois because it's unofficial, but he will sign tomorrow. All right, another scoop. George Lynch, Mr. George Basketball of Virginia. A tremendous rebounder, an unbelievable workaholic. He can play like three positions on the floor. And George Lynch, get ready for this. Excited? Yes, they are going to be. They'll be excited Tuesday down at Chapel Hill, North Carolina, because George Lynch will be a Tar Heel. One guy that has signed going to Ohio State is Jimmy Jackson. What a remarkable passer he is. The consummate team player. Everybody was commenting during a week here how he was thinking pass rather than shot. And that's a lost art, Gary, the ability to pass the basketball. And he's a great physical specimen. He should be a solid player for the Ohio State Buckeyes and a great recruiting coup by keeping him home in the state of Ohio for Gary Williams. Dick and I'll return. We're going to visit with the legendary John Wooden, also Shaquille O'Neal, the 12th annual McDonald's All-American game ready to unfold. McDonald's All-American High School Basketball Game. Brought to you by the good time, great taste of McDonald's. By American Airlines, something special in the air. And by Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Simple, delicious, and surprising. Taste them again for the first time. UCLA. Gary, we got an unbelievable guy. Now relax. You wanted to know if you were on live. Don't get nervous. Make believe you're playing on a court. I want you to tell everybody out there the story about how you met Dale Brown. All right, it was in a um, basketball camp in West Germany. And then after the camp was over, I said, Coach Brown, how could I increase my jumping ability? And uh, he told me some stuff. And then, um, and then when I was getting ready to leave, he grabbed me and said, How long you been in the Army, Coach? I said, I'm not in the Army. I'm only 13. He yep. freaking out. I'll tell you one thing. They're excited about having you down at LSU. What about playing with Chris Jackson? He's the greatest guard I, I've ever seen. What about playing with Stanley Roberts, another seven-footer? How are they going to fit both you guys together? Stanley will be on one side, and I'll be on the other side, or Stanley will be down low, or I'll be outside, like Perry. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, Shaquille. It's really been a pleasure watching you play here, and I know with this great size, I know you want to tell everybody out there that you're not 6'11". How big are you? Seven foot, even. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. This guy can play. Gary Let's go back to you now. Shaquille O'Neal will be a star at LSU. Well, not only is he seven foot, he has a size 20 shoe. We'll be back. The East have won the last four in a row. Back with the starting lineups in just a moment. Kansas City. We're just about set now to begin the 12th annual McDonald's All-American Game. Now for the introduction of the starting lineups, the PA announcer, Kevin Harlan. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting lineups for today's McDonald's All-American Game. For the East team, at forward, 6-9, number 31, Douglas Edwards. Forward, 6 7, number 44, Aaron Bain. At center, 6 9, number 33, Conrad McCray. Easy money, easy money. At guard, 6 3, number 13, Sean Golden. And at guard, 
6'6", number 22, Jimmy Jackson. Head coach is Buck Van Hus. And now for the West team. At Ford, 6'7", number 31, Daryl Cunningham. At Ford, 6'9", number 50, Dion Thomas. Center, 6'11", number 33, Shaquille O'Neal. At guard, 6'5", number 23, Mitchell Butler. And at guard, 6'2", number 24, James Robinson. And coach for the West team is Tom Lewis. All three wins. They'll be playing primarily with college rules. There are some changes, though, Dick. They'll be able to play no zone, and they have six fouls allowed per individual. What they'll really do, Gary, is give the opportunity for the players, as we see some of the rules right here, that'll be utilized in the game. And basically what these rules do, they allow the players to demonstrate their one-on-one -on -one ability and their great flexibility and versatility. And the kids really are so excited to be able to participate against great players from out of, throughout America. So they start shooting the one and one of the 10th foul. One other thing we should add that was not put on the screen there is that all the players must play at least 10 minutes. So all 25, other than the fact that we don't have Kenny Anderson available today, will be seeing at least 10 minutes of action. I know really when you talk about Kenny Anderson, we're talking about the most publicized high school basketball player probably in all time coming out of New York City because now with all the media outlets, he received more publicity than even a Lou Alcindor known now as Kareem Abdul-Jamar. He is dressed. He has a sprained left ankle. He tried to go yesterday. The three officials, all educators, selected for this game. Ron Zetcher from St. Louis, J.C. Leinbach from St. Joseph's, Missouri, and Charles Green from Oklahoma City. And there's your starting lineup. Well, from the Big 8 Conference, Kenny Anderson said before the game, he's really, really beating his heart out that he can't play. But he couldn't move at all laterally yesterday in practice. Here is James Robinson who won the slam duck contest that will be previewed at half time by Dick Vitale. Baseline, it comes into Cunningham. The pass deflected out to Shaquille O'Neal, and he's got it in. Did you see that body control? What unbelievable balance and agility for a guy seven feet tall and about 260. And a size 20 shoe. Boy, he is just a young thoroughbred. What a player he's going to be. Out it comes now, deflected away. Deion Thomas, who Dick indicated is headed to Illinois, gets it off now to Daryl Cunningham, and the left-hander can't get that one. Cunningham will be playing for Joey Meyer to Paul. I'll tell you what, you'll insert him into the starting lineup immediately, Joey Meyer. An explosive baseline drive. Daryl Cunningham will be a the ball blue game. In the blue again is the east, the home is the white, the west. On the move is Jimmy Jackson. He'll be playing for Gary Williams at Ohio State. That ball batted out of bounds, and the east will reset it. The east has won four in a row. They lead in this series, six games to five. Jimmy Jackson will hook up in a back four down at Ohio State with a guy that was a prop 48 last year named Mark Baker. Baker and Jackson will come a lot of offense with the Buckeyes. On Rod McGray and O'Neal, he rejected it. What intimidation by Shaquille. On the move, Cunningham, pass to Thomas. He is fouled. Conrad McGray coming across to commit the foul. Conrad McGray, his nickname is McNasty. He'll be playing for Syracuse. Look at Shaquille O'Neal. We're watching a seven-footer hanging in the air. Look at that balance. His body is so similar to a team to dream Olajuwon in terms of his body. Now look at this intimidation. He says, no, Conrad, no. Out of San Antonio, Mr. Basketball in Texas. At the line now is Deion Thomas. They talk about this guy who plays so well defensively, so fundamentally sound. He had great coaching in high school. I know they're going to be excited at Illinois. It was really Illinois and Iowa in a war, but he will be an Illinois guy. He has not officially signed yet, but I really believe it happens for him tomorrow. He's from Simeon High School, the same high school that produced Nick Anderson, who's playing so well for the fighting lineup. Anderson's going to be a first-team All-American on my team. John Golden trying to penetrate inside. Mitchell Butler gets it away to Cunningham, and Cunningham with an easy two. And it's an eight to nothing game now. Four points in the ball game for Cunningham, and the West is off and rolling. Everybody thought it would be the other way because the West is playing without a legitimate point guard. 
Rodney Jackson ducks inside, 6'6", 218, ripping it down as Thomas. They have some front court when you look at that West team with that size. Robinson up to Butler. Mitchell Butler, but what a pass from James Robinson. Mitchell Butler is one of the key players recruited by Jimmy Herrick in UCLA, and a lot of people rate the UCLA class one of the best in America. What mobility and agility by Butler along that baseline. Take a look at this. Hanging in the air, twisting, turning, reverse layup. A P.T. Pier. Mitchell Butler will be playing at UCLA, the West on top by 10. Mitchell Butler along that baseline, as we said, he'll be going out to UCLA. What a great story Butler is. Remember the name Happy Hairston played for the Lakers? He has a foundation out in L.A., and he tries to place youngsters with potential academically in the private schools, and that's what he did with Butler, who went to a private school, the Oakwood High School in North Hollywood, where he averaged 30 points a game, 16 rebounds. The competition wasn't key, but academically it was challenging, and he'll be a real solid player for UCLA. John Golden able to score on a nice give and go that time by Tate inside and East has finally registered a couple of points after playing two minutes in this game. Michael Tate will be going to Maryland where there's so much controversy. Look at the back Robinson, screen. That was Tracy Murray who set it up and the guy who won the slam dunk, you can see why though he soared on that one. He's a 6-2 player. Watch him at halftime. They call him Hollywood. Ready for this, Gary? He scored 84 points in two games against Chris Jackson in high school. Here's Shaquille. Look at the Celebrated in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, those Cajuns will love him down there, won't they? The crowd is oohing and on. Gary, hold me back, baby. <laughs> I saw him do that in practice this week. <laughs> he can do it in the game. Here's Jackson, baseline to Tate. <laughs> and intimidation by O'Neal again. Out it comes to Robinson. Three on two. Pulls up to Daryl Cunningham. <laughs> Tracy Murray, who's headed to UCLA, is fouled. And the foul going on the baseline. I'm still jumping in my seat here. I can't believe this. Hey, take a look at this. He blocks the shot. We're looking at a seven-footer, 260 pounds. He's putting the rock to the deck, and now he says, get out of my way. And he explodes with a power jam. Akeem, the dream of Lajuan, eat your heart out. Those NBA guys can't do this. He took off from the free throw line. Oh, my dear. <laughs> and they wonder why you get excited in a I game was like basketball, Gary. I was excited as you were. There's Murray cashing the free throw, and Murray let the nation in scoring, averaging 44 points a game, 16-2 in favor of the West. Tracy Murray's also going to UCLA, a good perimeter shooter. They'll be joining Zan Macy. Mason, a kid by the name of Rodney Oda, for a great recruiting class for Jimmy Harris. Ball gets away from Michael Tate. Tom Orlich, who is the coach of the West, got to be very happy about this thus far. He's out of South Tahoe, I should say California, even though they play for the Nevada State Championship, which they won two years ago. And O'Neal gets in that low. He was trouble, isn't he? Rebound is clear, though, effectively by Douglas Edwards. Up it comes to Sean Golden. Golden is headed to Georgia. Very good playmaker. He's a true point guard. He will be a perfect complement for Latario Green, who played in this game last year. He's a second guard. Nice move by Jimmy Jackson. Jackson so strong. Baseline to Murray. That was Robinson on the pass. And Murray is fouled, and James Robinson, who's really picked up his game this week, he's really become a big favorite. The foul is going against Tate. James Robinson's an explosive player. He's really a guy with a lot of exciting moves. That's Buck Van Hus, the coach, the winningest coach right now in high school basketball. He has 1,004 wins, an unbelievable record from out of Kingsport, Tennessee. 70 years old. Now we're going to have some change. Let's go back and look at the pass by Robinson. Yeah, Robinson normally thinks shot rather than pass. He drives it into Murray. You said a little bit earlier, Gary, a big-time scorer led the nation in scoring with better than 40 points a game. Well, O'Neal, a 
check out. Thomas will check out. I imagine East is glad to get number 33 out of there for a while. He's done it all. He's frightening. And what a great personality. I remember this, as he was talking about earlier when we interviewed him. They'll have a seven-footer by the name of Stanley Roberts, who was one of America's premier players last year, but was Prop 48. And he will be eligible to join Chris Jackson. So it'll be an exciting time at LSU. Tracy Murray has hit all four of his free throws. He'll come out now. This is Greg Graham, Mr. Basketball at Indiana, who's headed to Bob Knight's school in Bloomington as it's an 18 to 4 game in favor of the West. Goes off to Michael Tate, who's Mr. Basketball in Maryland. He's headed to the Terrapins, and Tate, a real warrior, he doesn't get that one. Matt Winston tips it out now, and here comes Alan Houston. His daddy, the new coach of Tennessee, baseline Graham, and here comes Tate. Four on one, and they're having a little trouble with it. And finally, behind the back step. Kind of impressive, huh? Conrad McGray. That's Conrad McNasty McGray. He was one of the finalists in the Slam Jam contest. He'll be a Syracuse Orange the next year. Calvin Bird is headed to Villanova. Misses that hook, and here comes Jimmy Jackson. Look at the legs on Jackson. 6'6". Six, six. They list him at 218. He's fouled by Graham on the baseline move. He made an excellent pass right there. Has great vision to the floor. He has tremendous body control, and he's a physical specimen. He's so strong. So Tate will inbounds now for the East, who are off to a very shaky footing. Six points, and we played almost five minutes of this first half. Douglas Edwards out of Miami, Florida. He gets around the basket. He just gets it in, doesn't he? He's really explosive along the baseline. His team was 35-1. and one. They had one loss. The St. Anthony's of Jersey City, USA Today's number one team in America, 32-0, where they featured Bob Hurley and coached by Bob Hurley Sr. We'll see Bob Hurley Jr. in this game before the afternoon is over. He's had a hamstring problem. It's really really been hampered, but he's a solid winner who'll be a real contributor at Duke. Graham intended for Matt Winstrom. He went one way, the ball the other. Nice pass by Golden, but Tate can't flag it down. Sean Golden really thinks like a point guard on the floor. He's constantly looking for the open man, and Huey Durham really should like him in his backcourt. They were one of the major disappointments last year at Georgia. They really can use a point guard to distribute the ball like Golden. Well, he is a coach's son, and so often coaches' sons know how to distribute that ball so well. There's Winstrom, seven foot one. The Mr. Basketball of Texas able to get the little jump puck to go. The great thing for Winstrom is the fact that North Carolina has so many strong front court players that'll have a chance to really develop and work and practice. He has a good future, not ready today. And the East has asked for a timeout. The McDonald's All-American game was played in Wichita. Michael Jordan set a classic record with 30 points. The performance gave him confidence. I was a little skeptical going into that because I didn't know, coming from Wilmington, North Carolina, you, you never know what the competition is like all over the United States. And from that point on, you know, I, I just started gaining confidence as a basketball player. Michael Jordan, the guy who was rated the top player in high school this year is Kenny Anderson. He's with a member of our broadcast team, Cheryl Miller. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Kenny, they could really use you out on the court. What did the game like this mean to you? Well, it's a great honor to be here, to be selected, but, you know, it's too bad I can't play. But um, I have no control over injuries. I just got to take the bitter with the sweet, try to get better, you know. Well, Kenny, the expectations are going to be real high at Georgia Tech. How are you going to handle the pressure? Well, it's no pressure on me. I'm an incoming freshman, and, you know, we have seniors uh, on the team, and I'm just going to go in there and play my hardest, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. All right, Kenny, we hope your ankle's feeling better. Let's go back to Gary. Dick, a lot of people say he's a tiny Archibald. What would you say he is? Who's he compared to? He's Kenny Anderson. He's himself. He's absolutely awesome, Gary. I watched him at the Nike All-American camp last summer, and he made all the great high school players look mediocre. That's how sensational he is in the open court. He will make Georgia Tech a better team and the players around him a lot better players with his great passing ability. Has to work on stroking the ball a little better in terms of his perimeter game. Has some changes you can obviously see now for the East in the backcourt. McCaffrey and Hurley will be playing together at Duke University. The shot going up by George Lynch and Lynch gets it to go in. Lynch really plays very effectively around the basket in a Capital Classic recently held. He had 22 rebounds and remember this, guys like Samson and guys like Sam Bowie and Patrick Ewing played in that game. Back door, but it doesn't go. Trying to come up with it. Jeff Webster will be playing for Billy Cubs at Oklahoma. Winstrom, seven foot one, can't get it. Rebound Bobby Hurley. Boy, this guy is something in the open floor. Watch them make a run now because of the leadership of Hurley. Hurley and McCaffrey know how to play the game. 
searching for some help. He's a teammate of Aaron Bain, who's also on this team, hasn't been in the ball game. They're at Flint Hill Prep out of Falls Church, Virginia. Inside it goes, intended for Barnes, and there with the follow very easily was Anthony Douglas, who's headed to Memphis State. He's a power player. He'll be a solid player along the baseline, reminiscent of a guy by the name of Sylvester Gray, who played at Memphis State. Alan Houston on the drive, and he's fouled. There's quite a story about Alan Houston. His dad, the new coach at Tennessee, he is asked now to be released from Louisville to go there. Well, look, basically what's happened here is we look at Alan Houston, certainly one of the premier shooters in America, a pure shooter. He loves Louisville, but he loves his dad a little bit more, and he wants to play at Tennessee for his dad. And there's been a precedent, and we'll get into that right now, Gary. There's been a precedent about this already that's been established. Years, several years ago, a kid by the name of Sean Murphy, he signed with Stanford. His dad, Ed Murphy, was named a coach at Mississippi. He wanted to play for his dad. Everybody cooperated. He got a release from Stanford, etc., and they declared him eligible immediately. Right now, they're going through that process with Alan Houston. Denny Crum is cooperating. In fact, Denny's son, Steve, will be a member of the staff at Tennessee, and they're all going to cooperate to see that Alan gets that opportunity. He really wants to play for dad. While all that was being explained about Houston, Pat Graham put one in, and then they had a lane violation on the second. Graham is headed for Indiana, as is Greg Graham. They're going to have the Grams and Grams at Indiana. You know, getting back to Allen Houston, they'll appeal to a committee, the steering committee of the National Letter of Intent. That's not the NCAA. That's really ruled by the Collegiate Commissioner's Conference, and Fred Jacoby is the head of it. The ball deflected out. It'll be the West basketball. Well, Allen Houston, in case you haven't followed that story too closely, Wade was an assistant with Danny Crum at Louisville for so many, many years, getting the job at Tennessee. And so, what is that? Uh, the blood runs a lot thicker, right? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I also believe, uh, if you watch this little baseline jumper here, good offensive rebound. That's going to be given to Jeff Webster now of Oklahoma City. They feel maybe he's the best player to come out of Oklahoma since Wayman Tisdale. I know Billy Phelps is excited about getting up. I want to point something out about kids that sign early, though, Gary. There's Hurley. That's a three-point attempt. Coming away with this Webster off to Allen Houston. He is so silky smooth. Is going to be a big time player, great attitude, prolific scorer, and he really can stroke. He's one of the premier perimeter shooters in America. That shot will go, it will count Lynch, and the foul going on Pat Graham, who jumped out on him. Lynch will get a great chance to play a lot in North Carolina because he could fill in for the graduating Steve Bucknall, a very similar kind of player. I mentioned earlier, I had 22 rebounds to break a Capital Classic record, and already over the years participating in that game were Giants like the Patrick Ewing. Getting back to the, what I wanted to say a little bit earlier about signing early, if I had a kid who was in the top 30, 40 in America, I would not advise him to sign early with the coaching chaos that's out there and that sickness and firing coaches, etc. Give a verbal commitment, yes, but don't obligate yourself to the point that um, if there's a coaching change that you can get out of it and go where you want to go. Because I don't care what anyone says, nine out of ten kids, when they make their selection, though the institution is very important, it's the comfort zone they have with that coach. Some of them are signing as juniors now. Here's Tracy Murray, the shot not going. Here comes Lynch on the breakout. Watch Hurley give it back. Hurley, off it goes, and Jamal Faulkner able to follow through. Hurley will start from day one in the Duke backcourt with Henderson, and McCaffrey will be in a rotation. Robinson, that's an air ball. Rebound is cleared. And he's starting to kind of come back into this ball game. And that's deflected out of bounds by Murray. It'll be the East ball. Doesn't shot me at all with Bob Hurley on the floor. All that kid knows is winning, winning, winning. I can hear Mike Krzyzewski right now saying, hey, Dick Vitale, who gave you the authority to coach Duke Blue Devils putting him in my starting lineup? Well, if they got a better point guard than Hurley to go with Henderson, then let's send him to the final four again. He'd probably be disappointed if you didn't suggest that. <laughs> James, <laughs> James coming to the ball game. Aaron Bain now has checked in for the first time. He's headed to Villanova. So I'm undefeated on TV. I got the best <laughs> record in America over the last 10 years. Walter with a little Jump hook, and there's O'Neal. O'Neal just kind of takes over, doesn't he? He's a raw talent. What a raw talent. Once he learns how to drop step inside and all the post moves. Now there is Deion Thomas at his best. He is so tough when he gets down low. And that turnaround jumper, it's almost unblockable. Simeon High School, you and you're out, has some solid prospects, as you alluded to earlier. Nick Anderson came out of Simeon. 
Baseline Douglas, there's O'Neal. That's his fourth block of the game. Lynch can't get it to go, and Deion Thomas hauls it in. I mean, it's going to be frightening to think about him hooking up with the personnel they're going to have at LSU. That's a three-pointer. Rebound cleared instead by Mitchell Butler, and he's fouled by Aaron Bain. Boy, Mitchell Butler's impressive. He spoke at the banquet last night. Very, very articulate man. Let's go back now to the highlight of the game thus far. I'll guarantee Magic Johnson would jump out of his seat watching this. So will Michael Jordan. Remember, we're looking at a seven-footer. We're looking at a guy 270. No, no, that's scary. <laughs> you see Golden, <laughs> Golden put both his hands up in front of his face. He knew what was coming. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Well, he's seven foot, as he uh, explicitly told you at the start of the broadcast. And I'm not 6'11". That's right. <laughs> Size 20 shoe. How big is he going to get? 29-16 oh, in favor of the West. Here's Aaron Bird. Bain, so fundamentally sound. A very good wing shooter. He's one of the class at Villanova. Probably the best class that Roy Massimino has ever recruited. They got five big-time prospects they have signed. And Bain is an excellent, what we call number three man, a wing player. Early going inside is fouled by Shaquille O'Neal. Hurley did not practice until yesterday. He had a severe hamstring problem. There's some concern whether he would even see action in the ball game. And so, Hurley, the guy who has turned so many games around just with his ball handling alone. He really knows how to find the open man. He's a great creator with the basketball. And he's an excellent shot maker when the game is on the line. Everybody talks about size. But as I've said time and time again, his last four inches makes him head shoulders over everyone else, especially in the closing minutes of a game. He very rarely makes a bad decision with the ball. And again, he is a coach's son. His daddy, the coach of the number one ranked team that was 32-0. Baseline, Mitchell Butler. Tracy Murray has it taken away. Douglas, breakout, comes to Hurley. Hurley protects the ball well, and he got it. He really sealed off the defensive player by protecting it with his body. He executes that exceptionally well. Robinson, three-pointer, won't go. O'Neal's there, look out. Oh. That's a man. That's a man. Capital M A N. A man. And what an infectious smile he is. What a great kid he is. Tremendous personality. His dad was in the service as he can shoot this open shot. Bain doesn't get it to go. Faulkner tries to follow. Tracy Murray gets it out there. Robinson. See, Robinson's a scorer. Look out! He's going to be called for charging, gets up, slaps the floor. Hurley showed some courage, staying in there and drawing the foul. I don't know if he shows courage or if he's a little bit dumb, Mr. Hurley Sr. <laughs> Tell your son with that hamstring problem, get out of the way, baby. Look at him right here. He says, come on, big fella, run me over, run me over. <laughs> you know what's amazing? He has the charging violation, but wasn't it impressive? Look at this right here, just watching him flying through the air. But look at him, though. Look at his expression. He slaps the floor. He's playing with enthusiasm. I was watching Coach Wooden smile, thinking about some of the thoroughbreds he had at UCLA. I guarantee you, when he looks at him, he's going to look pretty in a UCLA uniform. That was an impressive little jump hook by Douglas right over O'Neal. O'Neal committing the foul. Anthony Douglas has that Charles Barkley type of body. Weighs 245 pounds and six foot seven. He's from out of Memphis, as we said earlier. And there's a great class coming out next year, headed by a kid. Remember this name, Hardaway. Anthony Hardaway, a 6'7 player, a junior. In fact, the junior class is really, according to all the experts, headed and shoulders better than this class in terms of talent. There's the little jump hook inside by Douglas. Winstrom comes in because O'Neal has committed his third foul, so Shaquille will sit down at the 9-21 mark. Douglas doesn't get the free throw. Winstrom lost the ball. So it's going to be the East basketball. Winstrom's had some trouble with the thumb. You can probably see it's wrapped. He caught a ball on the end of the thumb in practice this week, had it x-rayed, and was okay, as McCaffrey will come back into the ball game, and Aaron Bain will leave. McCaffrey's a 6'4 stroker. His brother is playing football at Stanford and his sister plays basketball at Georgetown. So you got three kids in a family. Is this beautiful? Stanford, Georgetown, and Duke. Do you think that they got it together? <laughs> McCaffrey is fouled that time as Cunningham jumping out on him. McCaff McCaffrey needs to put on some beef. If he can put on about 20 pounds, it'll really help his ball game. And, and what a compliment that will be, those guys in the backcourt. Hurley and McCaffrey, they'll compliment so, each other so well for Duke. He looks really free right here. He was the most valuable player in a Dapper Dan game, featuring a lot of these great players. He can really shoot the basketball. He's got great range as a shooter. He's an exceptional passer as well. Mr. Basketball in Pennsylvania. His first point of the ball game. Rebound is cleared by Deion Thomas. 31-22 in favor of the West. 
Down it comes to Tracy Murray, and Murray gets the ball out to Mitchell Butler. Butler trying to play the point guard slot, normally a second guard, a big-time scorer. Cunningham into Winston. Winston may have a tough time catching the ball. Off it comes to McCaffrey. Back is Butler, but McCaffrey takes it. He's got great legs. He really has an excellent bounce off the floor. Doesn't look like he could jump that well. As frail as he is, but he's skied on that one. Here's Butler forcing his way inside. All of a sudden now, the East is making a move. Well, McCaffrey again. You know what's happening right now? No one's rotating back defensively. They're playing without a legitimate point guard. When Butler starts his penetration, the other guard is not rotating back and getting back to stop the transition game. Tracy Murray out of Glendora High School in California, and all of a sudden, they're just turning them over in a bunch. And here's Lynch, and three turnovers, three quick baskets, and it's a 31-28 ball game. Gary, who told you between the time, and I'm going to pat myself on the shoulder, didn't I tell you as soon as Hurley comes on the floor, they will start to make a run? The kid is a winner. Something about him on the floor makes everyone else better. Dick, I will never doubt you again, ever. <laughs> a lot happening here on this Sunday in the sports world, and one of those events is the NFL Draft. We'll keep you posted on that, as you can see. Aikman had signed earlier. There's really been no surprises through the first seven rounds, probably the eighth pick by San Diego. Bert Grossman is a little bit of a surprise, as they've gone now through 18 picks in the first round. Aikman, 11 million? I know Testaverde got 8 million, and they're still struggling. The only thing they found out with Testaverde is that he's colorblind in his few years that he's there. I mean, 11 million is Jones for real, I want to throw the football. <laughs> I mean, are you serious? I tell you, Aikman can play. Don't forget that. I know, Gary, but I tell you, you get with the market bears, I guess, but $11 million without ever throwing a football in the NFL. The biggest lead in this game was 14 by the West, and now it's down to three, and the score was 20-8 to eight when Bobby Hurley came into the game, and he really spurted this East team back into it. As Allen Houston on the move. Rebound, Tate. Tate is a warrior. Boy, is he a tough guy on the board. Bobby comes to Jackson, and a no-look pass, and Barnes didn't find it. You mentioned Allen Houston. As I said earlier, there was a precedent established with the Murphy case down in Mississippi. When a final ruling came in that case, Ed Murphy's son was declared eligible immediately, but he just decided to redshirt him. So Allen's sitting patiently, hoping that would happen for him, that he can play immediately at Tennessee. And I really think he should be allowed to. There's that take by Houston lean in, and he's fouled by Jimmy Jackson. Allen Houston, being a coach's son, very bright, an excellent student in school, and knows the game extremely well. It was so beautiful to hear him say yesterday, you know, I love Houston, I love, well, Houston, says I love Louisville, but I really love my dad a lot more. And you don't hear kids express that term, I love you, and I love mom and dad, and it was beautiful to hear him say that. Wade Houston, the new guy at Tennessee. And there's and there he is right there. as we speak. How about that? I'll tell you one thing. I was so happy to see Wade get an opportunity. There seems to be more and more assistant coaches getting a chance. We had Kevin O'Neill going to Marquette, Davey Odom out to Wake Forest. I think a lot of that has to do with the success of Steve Fisher. Breakaway, Winstrom gets it off to Calvin Bird, and Bird is able to save it inbounds to Houston. Cut off that time by Golden. Off it goes to Calvin Bird, and Bird, high, arching jumper. He's an athlete. He's going to Villanova, played out in Alameda, California. People say, why Villanova? Well, the Big East, number one, but number two also. He has a lot of relatives in that area, and he grew up in Wilmington, Delaware. Also coming from a Catholic school in the West, going to one in the East in Villanova. Baseline is Jackson, and he is fouled as he makes a move inside. Foul going on Houston. In a second half, we're going to document for the people up there some of the great recruiting classes and show what we think. This guy's an intense competitor. I really was impressed with him at practice yesterday. Tom Orlich is who you're talking yeah, about. Tom Orlich did a good job yesterday at practice. Barnes coming out of the ball game now. Faulkner checks in for the East. Again, the East is in the blue. The West, the home this year in the white uniforms. As we have seven minutes to go in this first half, Houston gets it off to Bird, and Bird lost control of it and hits the deck. Up it comes to Faulkner. Bird is an athlete with a lot of potential, especially on a defensive end. Look at Tate. Boy, he strong arms that one in. Follow tip inside. Looks like Jackson was there. Jackson and Tate, you're talking about two real strong bodies. I know you really like Michael Tate. I do. Tate is one of those guys very, very intense, and he just plays hard all the time. Outside Houston. Rebound cleared by Doug Edwards. Edwards will bring it out to Coleman. Look at that move in the open floor. Graham had him on the base side, and then he lost it as he went by. On the far sideline, they had it cut off, and it looked like he was able to negotiate it, only to 
we'll lose the ball. Here's Greg Graham, who'll be playing for Bob Knight, and he's fouled by Golden. Greg Graham is a real second guard, trying to make, again, the adjustment to play the point guard position. He's a good defender, and he'll fit in perfect in the puzzle down in Indiana. He won five games at the buzzer this year, Greg Graham did, and here is the other Graham, and the other Graham will also be playing for the Hoosiers, Pat Graham. Well, he won the three-point contest, Pat Graham. He can really stroke it. You better believe those screens are going to be coming down in Indiana in their passing game, and he's going to be curling off those screens, drilling that trifecta. He won the three-point contest the other night, which you also see at halftime, and Graham is fouled by Edwards. He has really excellent range as a shooter. If you look at Buck Van Hoos. 70 years old, he's won 1,004 games. He's 22 games short of the all-time record. That all-time record is held by a guy by the name of Leslie Gadette, who coached at Pine Prairie, Louisiana. He reminded me, Coach Van Hus, he said, now remember, Dick, I got my best players sitting down on the sideline. I've heard you say that Kenny Anderson is the best guard in America. Now, he's not playing. Let everybody know that. <laughs> he got a real break, though, when Hurley came back, didn't he? Yeah, he did. 35-30 now, the west of the lead. 6-18 left to go in this first half. At halftime, we'll have a preview look, or a look back, I should say, at the slam dunk and the three-point contest. Here's Bird with a steal, and Faulkner will come up with it. Hurley made a mistake. I can't believe it. Very Rarely you see him make a mistake with the basketball. Faulkner is headed to Pittsburgh, penetrates inside. He's from Christ the King High School, city champs, state champs, and they got a guard, a junior. Remember this name, Khalid Reeves. Reeves is going to be recruited very heavily by Bobby Kremins. He's going to try to either get a Reeves or a Brian Reese to hook up in the backcourt with Mr. Anderson. And Brian Reese is a great one from out of Palatine High School, a junior. And that shot buried by Jeff Webster. Boy, he'll fit in with Oklahoma with that kind of shot, won't he? Well, Webster's a guy that Billy Tubbs has told me that he really expects him to make a positive contribution. Baseline push off inside, I believe. Edwards moving inside. Winstrom is the guy guilty of the foul. Winstrom, by the way, talk about good student. He's a 3.6 GPA thus far in his uh, high school career. The thing I liked about him yesterday, he really knows he has a great deal of work in, in many areas of his game. He spoke about that yesterday, about how he has to get a little bit stronger, work a little bit more on his defensive ability, his foot speed, jump and roll. And it's great to hear a kid realize that he does still have some shortcomings because a lot of times these kids get to this level, the head gets a little bigger and bigger and bigger. Winston really does work hard. He is the second tallest player to ever play in the McDonald's Classic. You know who the tallest was, don't you? Ralph Sampson. Well, they got one coming in here next year by the name of Sean Bradley. Remember that name, 7'4", from out of Castledale, Utah. Everybody's going to be chasing Mr. Bradley. Edwards on his second free throw, able to put it through. 37-33, the West. They've led all the way. The Grams operating in the backcourt now for the West. See, Pat Graham's the kind of kid that has to play in a situation that's going to get him screened. So in a game like this, he will not be as effective as a lot of the one-on-one -on -one players. And so the screen there, drawing the foul. Orley doesn't agree with that. That was Calvin Bird with the illegal screen, and so the East will have the basketball. Hurley now back into the ball game, along with Aaron Bing. Nine fouls each. Now the tenth foul is when they start shooting the one-and-one. -one. That's one of the differences in the rules today. Tate tries to take it inside. Here comes Graham. Good transition player. Boy, he elevates himself there for the shot. And he's fouled by Tate. Well, he's a good athlete, and now with Jay Edwards going to the NBA, he's certainly going to get an opportunity to play a lot more. I hope Jay can make it. I'm not really concerned at all about his basketball talents. He has to prove that he's mature enough to live the life of an NBA or the hotel lobbies, to travel, etc. Personally, I think he made a major mistake and should have remained in a Hoosier uniform. So this guy will try to help replace him along with Pat Graham. What a year, though, in. Indiana had recruiting wise. Phenomenal. They got a guard by the name of Chris Reynolds, who's an outstanding point guard prospect from out of Illinois. A kid by the name of Chris Lawson from out of Bloomington, a 6'10 player. The big question mark is will Lawrence Funderburg wear an Indiana uniform? How good is he? Bob Gibbons, the guru of high school, says as he listed his top seven, he said if Funderburg played high school basketball this year, he would be in the top five. Winstrom comes up after the ball batted around. Webster on the move. Oh, nice pass. Yes, it was, and Bird is able to complete the play inside. Good athletic move for the people out there. Funderburg did not play on his high school team this year in Columbus, Ohio. He was, I guess, this, he was suspended from the team. 
but yet everybody wanted him, and everybody thought Bob Knight had him. Well, he gave a verbal commitment. He has not signed yet with Indiana. Bobby Hurley, who led this comeback by the East, now brings it inside. Look at Tate and Edwards hammer it inside, but it's going to be the West on the move. Pat Graham. Boy, doesn't he use his body well? These kids really know how to play the game. He protected the ball exceptionally well. Sealed off the defensive player with the body. 43-33, so all of a sudden now the West starting to make another spurt. Bain can't get it to go. Webster brings it outside to Pat Graham. We have four minutes left in this first half. And Pat Graham hits the deck hard and bodies everywhere. Nobody is hurt. And on the move is Doug Edwards at the other end. Rebound Webster. All of a sudden now, a little helder skeleton down on one end and down to the other. This is Graham, and he misses again. Winston breaks Ooh. it out of there. They're knocking bodies to the floor. No whistle. And here comes uh, a new wave of players for the West, but right now we're going to have a timeout. 3.36 to go in this first half. The 12th annual McDonald's All-American. Here is Webster on the move. This is Webster going out to Oklahoma. Nice pass inside to Calvin Burns. Bird with a reverse layup. And the West by 10. Well, as we mentioned, the NFL draft is continuing to unfold. And let's uh, take a look and let you see what's happening in your favorite teams. Mandridge of the number one pick today after Aikman had signed earlier. Mandridge, that big, monstrous offensive tackle. Sanders, the Heisman Trophy winner. Thomas continuing on. The other Thomas from Nebraska. Whirly, big, strong running back. Grossman, Sammy Smith coming out a year early. Eric Hill going to the Phoenix Cardinals. Wolford then picked up for the Bears. And they had Trace Armstrong, who played at Arizona State, then last year at Florida. That's Terry Metcalf's son, Eric. Jeff Lagerman out of Virginia. Andy Heck, who was a tight end, moved offensive tackle. Hartley Dyke. Joe Wolf, boy, you're going to hear a lot about him. Williams, whose dad was a quarterback at Notre Dame several years ago. Wayne Martin, Arkansas, that's a real surprise. Picking Atwater is an outstanding safety. Was his dad Bob Williams, an outstanding that's quarterback? That's exactly Notre Dame. what. Number nine. Yeah, remember, I remember him? Remember him. Fighting Irish. I didn't know you knew anything about football. I think Miami made a mistake with Sammy Smith. Every big game at Florida State, he never really had the numbers. He's got great potential and tremendous size and quickness, but he's one of those guys, Mr. Potential. I guess he was hurt a lot. He really was. There's Hurley. Boy, Hurley is fun to watch, isn't he? Well, I guess Doc Schull is the kind of guy that can get the most out of him. Heck, I'll tell you one thing. Hartley Dykes went down a little further than I anticipated. I thought he'd go up a little higher. I didn't see the name Andre Risen. Was he on here? You know what? He was not I didn't see Andre Risen. He was a former basketball player. Great. Oh, he played Blanker. outstanding bas basketball, football for Michigan State. Something he was a special. Wide receiver. There is Lynch uh, committing the foul. Very near, about 20 minutes away from my home down in Bradenton, Sarasota area. Well, the seniors uh, really are exciting to watch, and they have an interesting format. They have the international team against the American team, and guys like Gary Flair playing for the international team, and of course, Arnie for the United States team. $50,000 goes to each individual on the winning team. 44-35, less than three to go in this first half. Tracy Murray averaged 44 points a game in high school. In the final game of the year, he got 64 of 83 points in the title game, and they lost it. And that's out of bounds. It'll go to the West. You can really see four of 83, Dick. Can you he, imagine? He can really shoot the perimeter shot. And next year, Derek Martin, who played in this game, will be the point guard. And that's really his true position. He had to play the second guard, really, with Poo Richardson there. They're going to be very good, UCLA. Well, they have two in this game. Another guy by the name of Zan Mason is very good. They flying inside, and... Deion Thomas is fouled, and the foul is going to go on the grass. They're going to love him at Illinois. Deion Thomas is perfect for what they need. As we look at Coach Van Hus, very common at sidelines, won over 1,000 games in his high school career. Here's a look at Thomas, a good inside player. When you put Thomas on that front court with guys like Nick Anderson, and you take a look, they got another guy they signed out of junior college, Andy Capetti, who should be a solid player from Nigeria. Marcus Liberty is back, and of course, Kendall Gill and Steve Bardo. That, to me, spells success. How good will I be? They're in my preseason top five. I have a number three behind UNLV, number one, and number two to Georgetown Hoyer. I bet Marcus Liberty's a much better basketball player this next time around. Well, as Mike Dushan is the great job for Sporting News pointed out in one of his recent articles, Brian Shorter 
Brian Shorter did a great job sitting out the year and played immediately and was a success. Not many guys can make that transition when they're ineligible for one year and not allowed to practice. So McRae inside is foul. McRae with a sweat bank curve on the arm. You don't see that very often. Goes to an outstanding high school in New York academically, Brooklyn Tech. Okay. And he's really a good student. Look, he says that counts for five if that goes in. That counts for five. That was the 10th team foul, so they're going to start shooting free throws. And McRae will go to the line. The big question mark of the is not about the play of McRae. The big question mark is, will Garrett Coleman go to the NBA draft, or will he come back? Personally, I think it would be much better if he would come back to school and have a chance to be number one in the draft because he cannot break the top five with the guys like Stacey King, Danny Ferry, Sean Elliott, Glenn Rice, and also, help me out, I'm forgetting one name there, one more great guy. Um, Anyway, what is there? There was McRae here. He's a pretty good free throw shooter. That's got to be very encouraging to Syracuse, right? He's got a good jump right there. He's headed there, and maybe he can help James Behind's club. Robinson rejected that time by McRae. McRae averaged seven block shots a game. And McCaffrey scores. He's about Cunningham. He says, Cunningham, get out of my way, baby. I may be looking to you like a little frail guy. He has hands, heart, and I'm going to say something. This kid has got a head on his shoulders. He's intelligent as well, McCaffrey. Give it up, Bobby. Give it up. Hurley. There it is. Ah, there it is. Can Bob Hurley play? Oh. Are you kidding? Can he play? And it's certainly not. You know, you got to look at every surge, and every surge that the East has made, number 14 has been in there. Yeah, he's been part of it. You know, I, I remember now the fifth guy, Purvis Ellison. Okay, Purvis Ellison. There's the shot by Cunningham, followed by Butler. Mitchell Butler takes it back, and all of a sudden it's ripped out of there by Lynch. Put it in the hands of Hurley, and something good's going to happen. He gets it to McRae, and Hurley is making things happen. He really can distribute the basketball. He'll have the Cameron Crazies going wild down at Duke. And McCaffrey, he can stroke it. They play so well together. They really put a show on in a dapper dance. McCaffrey and Hurley, both going to this. Wow, well, they complement each other. It's almost like a package, isn't it? You take those two together. Everybody wants a kid by the name of Eric Montrose next year. One of his choices, he mentions, potentially it could be Duke. Even everybody, even though everybody in Indiana feels who go to Indiana. He's from out of Lawrence North High School. They won the state championship. He's a junior at seven feet. His dad played for Michigan. Howard Garfunkel saying this guy, McRae, is the most improved big name player in the country. And at halftime, we'll have Howard on along with Bob Gibbons. The two coolers will visit with Cheryl Miller. Two fierce competitors, Bob Gibbons of Bob Gibbons, Gibbons All-Star Sports and Howard Garfinkel of Five Star Fame. 46-42 in favor of the West. Mitchell Butler gives it off to Cunningham, and the left-hander is able to make it. He's really got a variety of shots. And Daryl Cunningham, along with a guard by the B.J. Tyler, are going to contribute. Look at that drive by Hurley. Changes direction, hesitation, goes to the left hand. And remember, he's practiced very little this week and has picked up his game where he left it when he was 32 and all. There's Cunningham again. Cunningham is an outstanding defensive player, and you can see how he can shoot the ball as well. Cunningham played at the same high school that produced Darryl Thomas of the 87 National Championship in the team, and also Isaiah Thomas. That's a big league move down in the post. Strong inside. But come on, Coach, smile. Come on, Coach. It's not that tough. Enjoy it. Oh. There goes Hurley down. Great pass inside. Look at McGrath. Power move on the inside. Good head fake. Takes it up strong. Jimmy Behan says, I love it. The guy that recruited him, Bernie Fine, he deserves a head job. He's the assistant now at Syracuse. Let's get him a job. <laughs> McRae now at the line. Foul going on Tracy Murray. Seven points in the game for McRae. What? You're having a ball. Here. I'm having a great time. I'm just wondering how many guys you're going to get jobs before this day is over. Pretty soon I better get myself a job. <laughs> Cunningham distributes the ball off to Murray. Oh, he's checked that oh, time by Barnes. Goaltending. Here comes the Barnes at the other end. A lean in charging. It'll be a charging call on Daryl Barnes. Daryl should have given that up with a little bounce pass inside. I flew on a red eye after speaking over in Portland, Oregon with Bobby Kremins. And Kremins, he's really excited about his recruiting class. And one of the reasons is Mr. Barnes. Daryl's a great shot blocker. He's a kid that he thinks can place the number three position for him. There's a look at Barnes. Should have thrown a little bounce pass for the layup to Lynch. 
Robinson misses at the other end. Barnes, as you mentioned, going to Georgia Tech. They feel his best basketball ahead of him as Lynch is fouled by Robinson. I think everybody agrees, Gary, that the best recruiting classes, one, two in America, have to be Indiana and Georgia Tech. We understand that Andre Risen went to the Indianapolis Colts, the 22nd pick in the first round. That really surprised me, just like you, Dick. I'm surprised that you would pick up on this. That's a steal. I'll tell you, I've been following football. I'm getting ready because I'm hoping that they hire me to do a little bit of the NFL. Deardorff and Vital. No, Vital and Deardorff sounds better. <laughs> just remember, he picked you up by the collar and throw you out of the booth if you didn't like what you were doing. I know. You talk about a big, strong guy from out of Michigan. I met his daughter in the airport. His daughter is an outstanding basketball player. Lynch makes it a 50-47 game, and all of a sudden, the East is in three. Here comes Robinson. He's Seven just... seconds left in the half to Butler. Changed his shot and made it. James Robinson giving the rock up really surprised me. He averaged 41 points a game in high school, and he hasn't met a shot yet that he doesn't like. <laughs> Butler on the receiving end of that. Split the basket now with a chance for the three-point play. Look at James. He gives it up. Butler says, I can't believe it. That's the first pass he's given all week. <laughs> You're getting awfully tough on Robinson. I like James. I'll tell you one thing. Wim Sanderson's going to love him down in Alabama. He's a big-time scorer. He's not a point guard. He's a second guard. Two seconds. Murray's going to have to hurry down the floor. The shot. That's going to go. And we come to the halfway point. Tom Orley. As his team on top, 52-47. Good action in this first half of play. At halftime, Dixel looks back at the slam dunk competition. The three-point play and the gurus of basketball. Garfinkel and Gibbons, all that coming up at halftime. As the West leads it, 52-47 over the East. <laughs> The West trying to end a four-game winning streak of the East with a 52-47 halftime advantage. A lot of excitement here in the Kansas City area, and Dick Vitale going to try to capture some of that as he looks back at the slam dunk and the three-point play. During the week, there were a lot of activities. One of the highlights, the three-point competition. And what a trifecta, man. Get ready down of Indiana for this shooter, Pat Graham. He can stroke it with the best. Move over, Larry Bird. And then the highlight was the slam dunk competition. Take a look at some of the preliminaries. Rolly Massimino's got a jumping jack in Calvin Bird. And then it was Mitchell Butler heading out to UCLA. And then another great leaper, Mr. Michael Tate, playing for the University of Maryland. Bless those 10. Calvin Bird again with a reverse jam. And then a look at McNasty himself, Conrad McRae, going to the carrier dome. And then a look at James Robinson, get ready with Sanderson down in Alabama. And they love it. And now we take a look at a reverse slam jam bammer. What a move, and all the players love the action. Come on, smile a little bit. And now we're in the final. Conrad McRae with his best jam, a power move. He'll be with Jimmy Beheim in Syracuse. Take a look at Conrad, the nickname, McNasty from out of Brooklyn Tech. Look at this high wire act. He can really sky, 6'9", and 220. Now Michael Tate averaged 30 points a game, 16 rebounds. Look at that jammer, baby. They love it. He'll be playing for the Maryland Terrapins. He goes between his legs, bounces it off the glass. Keep your heart out, Michael Jordan, baby. That's a super leaper. And what about this guy? Take a look at this 6'2". They nickname him Hollywood, and you can see why. He's got a lot of pizzazz. He can be scintillating James Robinson from out of Mura High School, out of Jackson, Mississippi. He'll be playing for the Crimson Tide of Alabama. And the Slam Jam winner, as you look at the finalists, flash those tents, baby. There's the winner, the Slam Dunk Competition champ, Mr. James Hollywood Robinson. You did a nice job of those two guys. 52-47 halftime. We're going to take a look at some highlights in this first half. Some of the stats as the West enjoys the halftime lead. Besides, because the kid's got a world of ability, great hands, quickness. But the kid, Martin, Wayne Martin, his brother plays at Murray State, and his brother could be an 
NBA first round draft choice. When's the last time you had a guy, an NBA first round draft choice, and an NFL first round draft choice? You know, it's interesting. After Aikman, not a quarterback. Not a quarterback. Where's the guy from Adam from Miami? Well, that's, that's uh, of course, that's a supplemental draft, but there's other guys like well, Elton's right. out of Wake Forest that, uh, that will be uh, possibly taken in the first round. Some speculation there. So it shows you a lot of offensive linemen, defensive linemen thus far in the draft. That shows you I don't know anything about the No, no, no. I would have no. really known that Steve Wolf was going for the supplementary. I knew it, but I forgot it. I blew it. Give me a turnover. Graham to Graham, and the ball is ricocheted off. Here's Shaquille O'Neal, and Shaquille tries to... Oh! And he got it up and in, and he's fouled by Doug Edwards. I'm certainly not taking anything away from Kenny Anderson. He's explosive. He's a great scorer. He's had a brilliant career at Archbishop Malloy. And I don't think he can take a little guard over this kind of ability. We're looking at a seven-footer again. Look at the extension. The power move inside. He's frightening. He's scary how good he can be. It's more to get down to his work ethic and how badly he wants to be a great player. He's got such a great attitude. i got to believe he will have a work ethic. Well, he's playing for a basketball motivator. He's certainly with his magical motivational ability will get up to perform. McCaffrey in the first half was three or four. He reloads and gets this one. Well, he squares his body so well, McCaffrey. Good shooters will square their body to the baseline, get a good look at the rim. You can shoot for over the front of the rim. Looking at the East, they are starting the four of the first five in that first half. A entirely different starting five in the second half for the West. As Webster loses it, here comes Jimmy Jackson. Jackson on the move, and Jackson draws the foul. Big, strong guy to take it inside like that. Played at Macomber Whitney High School in Toledo, Ohio. Had all kinds of publicity for the last three years. Led his team to the state championship, and again, a class act. You know, people wondering about strategy. We're not just playing just man-to-man, -man, and we're really staying away from strategy in a game like this because it's really a situation to display the great individual talents of these super players. He led his team to the state championship. They won their last 18 games, the first title they'd ever won. Here inside, nice move, spin move. Doesn't go that time by Doug Edwards, and able to force it inside is Jackson. Well, the pump fake, he really utilized that good pump fake three times to get free for that shot. Greg Graham, not a great outside shooter. He's more of a transition guy, but Webster is there. Very opportunistic on the play. Webster's an active player. They also signed an Oklahoma kid by the name of Orlando Lightfoot. Foot, a talent from out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Baseline, Sean Golden. Golden is smooth. He's solid. He can make the big shot. But more than that, he gets everyone else involved offensively. He'll be playing for the Georgia Bulldogs, we mentioned earlier. Here it comes off down to McCaffrey. McCaffrey didn't start the ball game, but starting the second half. Jackson can't come up with it, and he gets it off. McCaffrey inside, and rebound by McCaffrey. Can he jump? And here's Jackson again. And Jackson right now is almost single-handedly carrying this East team back into this game. They trail by one. There's O'Neal and Pat Graham able to follow. 58-55 in favor of the West. The Big Ten is going to have quite a race again next year. Michigan returning most of their club with the exception of Glenn Rice. Illinois will be outstanding. Indiana, Ohio State, Michigan State will be improved. It'll be an unbelievable year again in the Big Ten. The conference that has the most players in this game, the ACC with seven. As Greg Graham follows, here's Shaquille. And he finds his feet <laughs> on the way down. He's having fun out there. He really is having fun. 60, 55. There's no reason with that kind of talent you can't have fun every time you're on the floor. Jackson inside. Graham tries to keep it from going in any further. O'Neal with the rebound. He has seven rebounds in the first half. Now 10 for the game. Allen Houston. Barnes brings it down. Allen believes he's a much better shooter than we've seen here. Temple's really picking up in this game, isn't it? Half it comes to Houston again. Three Give it on up. one to Greg Graham. Nice reverse move. He's fouled by McCaffrey. See, Greg Graham is an athlete. He'll give Indiana the one dimension they really lacked in terms of athleticism. That's the magical word now everybody seems to talk about. Here's Shaquille inside. He just takes it right at the defense. Look at a little ballerina act. You know, it's interesting coming into this game. The West was concerned they didn't have a point guard. Guess who thought he could play point guard? Shaquille. He went <laughs> up to his coach, Portlips, and said, I can play point guard. Guard. Way well, broke down the floor that one time. Maybe he can. Okay, when you're that big and you're that strong, you play anywhere you want. <laughs> 
Graham at the line now with his second opportunity. Five-point lead for the home team, the white team, the West. And now substitution coming into the ball game. Calvin Bird replacing Graham. We mentioned already the great class for Indiana. They have a verbal commitment from Damon Bailey, one of the premier juniors in the nation. And what a class next year in that junior class. Luther Wright, seven-footer from out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. Sean Bradley, 7'4". Eric Montrose, 7 feet. Bradley's out of the Utah area. Here comes Bird now. They break out again. Houston tries to take it inside. He lost it, but it was touched by McCaffrey. It'll be the West basketball. Allen is a much better player than what we've seen out here. I watched him at the Nike camp as well. He can stroke the ball. He's one of the real premier shooters in high school basketball. Second all-time leading scorer in Louisville history. Red Ballard all-time. And there is going to be goaltending or a foul. Should be goaltending without a doubt, plus a foul. As Barnes was the guy reaching in on Shaquille. What was Shaquille said? He said one reason he went to LSU is that Dale Brown never came up to him and says, you're great. He said every other coach told me I was a great player, and that made a big difference in my thinking. Well, he also met Dale at such a young age as his dad was stationed in West Germany. We talked about that while Dale was in West Germany. Dale was ready to jump in a sauna when he found out the kid was only 13. Found out his father was taking a sauna. He wanted to jump in there with him. Should have definitely been goaltending. You got to get the ball coming up. That ball was coming down. Instead, they called the foul, and uh, O'Neal able to cash him in, 63-55. Shaquille with 15 points in the game. And it goes to Barnes. Nice catch by the left-hander, but the shot won't go. Webster bringing it out. Well, he changed that shot. O'Neal did. His presence on the floor. That ball hit Houston, and the heels came back across the floor. Here's Calvin Bird from the corner. Rebound by Webster, and Graham inside with it. Graham will put it up, he's got it, and he's fouled. What a great play that was. For the average person out there, don't simply say that was a little layup. But I'm going to tell you something. In that traffic, the utilization of that pump fake and that head fake, so valuable to get free inside for all you young kids. Watch him right now. Watch him use the head fake. He comes up with a loose ball. See how he freezes the defensive player, gets him to leave his feet, squares his body to the baseline. Count it, he can stroke it. He gets the roll, gets the three-point play. A foul going on Barnes. 66-55. So all of a sudden now the West making a little move, a little surge. Maybe a revisit from Steve Alford down in Indiana with the presence of Pat Graham. Barnes has to track this one down. Gets it out to Jimmy Jackson. We played now almost six minutes of the second half. Headshot over the mark. Inside, Douglas trying to horse it back up, and he's fouled. If there's one art these kids have to really work on, Gary, is shooting the jump shot. Off the dribble and off the dribble. It's the two basic ways to shoot the J. Most players with this kind of ability want to demonstrate their Michael Jordan hanging in the air, twist and turn and slam dunk. And really, they don't work on the perimeter shot. And I think that's one area that youngsters have to really try to work a little bit more on, the fundamentals of shooting. Douglas, they call him the old junkyard dog. I mean, he is strong. He said that uh, he thought about playing football one time and did play a wide receiver in high school. Can you imagine? Well, he's intelligent. He went to basketball. Who wants to bang their head out there? Take that kind of pounding. <laughs> After I read that article in Sports Illustrated about the big horse that's going out to Green Bay, are you serious? You think I'd want to get in front of that guy? <laughs> hey, what a negotiation process that's going to be. Uh, he said, if Aikman got $11 million, I have to get better because I rated out and all the rating reports a lot higher than Mr. Aikman. Tony Mandridge, who you're talking about. <laughs> hey, can we talk some baseball? <laughs> okay. I think the Dodgers right now could be in a little trouble. My man Lasorda, he's worried about his diet, and they better start winning. He quit eating all that Laguini and pasta. There is Douglas hitting the free throws. You noticed during that uh, little uh, expertise on football, we had a change. We have five West players checking in. 66-57, the West to the lead. 15-49, left to go. Ronald McDonald Holmes. They're a home away from home for the families of seriously ill children who are being treated at nearby hospitals. What a great project it is. Many of these players say the touching moment for them is to visit some of these youngsters and realize how lucky these kids are. In fact, Isaiah Thomas, that was his quote when he said, I came here, played in a McDonald's game, and I was really so touched and realized how lucky I am that I could be able to play basketball. Guess who's back in the game? Hurley. Didn't get that shot to go, but he comes in and creates some havoc. Here is Graham at the other end. 
Greg Graham has that athletic ability we talk about. When we talk about athletes, we really define it simply. The quickness up and down the floor, the lateral quickness, and the jumping ability of an athlete. Aaron Bain has checked into the ball game. He goes baseline. Winston went up to try and intimidate it, but it was there anyway. Two outstanding forwards. Can you believe on one high school team having a Bain and a Lynch? And they had that at Flint Hill. Well, Lynch transferred after leading Roanoke to the the state championship. And then Flint Hill Prep cannot play for the state championship because they're a private school. Stu Vetter does an outstanding job in teaching discipline and having them play together as a unit, blending great talent together. Dennis Scott plays there, and he'll be hooked up with Kenny Anderson down at Georgia Tech, the rattling rest of them. Why does scoring come? And Gray into Bain, and Bain has scored his first two points a moment ago. Doesn't get this one. And up with it is McRae. McRae gets it inside. Nice fake by Lynch. He's fouled. Foul is going to go on Deion Thomas. Lynch is one of those players that can play about three positions on the floor. He can do whatever a coach decides. And with the kind of system they utilize at North Carolina, and we said right now it's questionable, but I'm telling you, he's sucked. Their first meeting head-to-head -head since Seoul. And then the last chance to qualify for the run for the Roses, the Kentucky Derby trial. Also, a look ahead with a Derby preview next Saturday here on ABC's Wide World of Sports. I have never been to a Kentucky Derby. They tell me that is an unbelievable happening. They are athletes, of course. Don't forget, they are an athlete in their own right. I used to get so excited going to Claiborne Farms and take a look at Secretariat and Acula B. I'll watch Hurley now. Watch the decision. Pass intended for Bain from Hurley. Bain is able to come up with it. A gray can't come up with it. And Thomas is fouled as a reach-in on Aaron Bain. We mentioned Bain's team, but Hurley's team had two players signed with Stephen Hall and P.J. Carlissimo. I used to always tell people, when they'd ask, where'd you go to school? I'd say, Stephen Hall. Now when everybody asks, well, the banquets I go to, I scream out loud, Stephen Hall, Stephen Hall. So proud of what P.J. Carlissimo did. you scream out? I didn't know you did that, Dick. That's a surprise to me. I'm normally very shy. I know you are. I just, that's really a, a big setback. 68-60 <laughs> with 14-18 to go. Robinson with the ball game now. Off to Cunningham. Cunningham had a strong first half. Did three or four from the field. And coming up momentarily was the East stand. Back comes Butler. Good steal by Mitchell Butler. Other end, McGray. McGray's really playing hard. He's having some difficulty inside, but he hasn't given up in there. He's really got great jumping ability. He has to work on the offensive end and improve some of his offensive skills. Jimmy Beheim is an excellent offensive teacher. He allows his players to have flexibility to their game. Three-pointer by Robinson, dead center. A guy who averaged over 40 points a game, cans that one from outside. 41 had 84 points in two meetings with Chris Jackson, the star now of LSU. That time, a little out of control was Hurley. The East will lose the ball. Murray, Tracy Murray, will come into the ball game and coming out will be coming in. You know, Mississippi has produced some outstanding guards. When you think about Chris Jackson, now looking at James Robinson, Material Green now playing for Georgia, where he'll hook up with short gold in the backcourt for Jimmy Dorham. Baseline, Tracy Murray hung up in midair. And somehow coming out of that pack with it is George Lynch. Early, by the way, seven assists. He's got another one if that one goes, and it does. Eight assists. That ties the record. Bobby Hurley on that pass. Excellent timing by Hurley to throw that lob up on top. 73-64. Robinson with Hurley in his face. Off it comes to Tracy Murray. Here's Winston. Robinson from outside. Another three-pointer this time way short. Winston tries to follow. Winston hits the face. Winston is shaken up as Faulkner comes down to take early. They move the ball quickly and early. Away step, but that's out of bounds as Winston now up and coming back to the defensive end, but he's very groggy. He's had that kind of week. He's had his finger jammed. He got slammed down a couple of times by Shaquille O'Neal. But he's been a kid with a lot of tenacity. Let's look at seeing how he got hit in the face. Well, we often talk about you can't teach size. as a seven-footer, a guy that can run the court. Right now, he's going to catch it. There it is. There's the contact. But it didn't hurt their ball club, even though he was not able to get back defensively as they turned it over. Now Shaquille O'Neal has come in. Back door, Deion Thomas. Shaquille's got it. And as he moves inside, he traveled with it. He lifted his third foot in the lane. So Shaquille making that move, traveling, and now at the 12-23 mark, 73-64, the West. 
outside shot by Lentris. Now, Lentris' game is not an outside game. He's more of a player that can take it inside. Very strong. Robinson on the move. Here comes Tate. Tate to McRae, and he won't get to that one. Lynch is a power player, Gary. He's more or less a power player, but he can also play on a wing. He's an excellent passer. And so, the turnover will give it back to the West. The thing about Lynch, they say he might be able to play four positions. He's so versatile. Some people question that, but they, some of the experts say there's a possibility of that happening. Now, there is Murray. What a sweet shooter he can be. Yeah, he's an excellent perimeter shooter. You average 40-some points a game like he did. He has ability to score inside and outside. Sixth block of the game for O'Neal. I'm just awed by those. I watch him on the floor. I can't believe how good that kid can be. He has to work a lot, really, on his inside moves, developing a jump hook, some drop steps. I mean, he doesn't even know how to play the game right now. Look at this. And I tell you what, he is a fun kid to be around. When he learns how to play, watch out. Here, the McDonald's All-American game was held at Albuquerque. Despite a strong performance by the West, John Kemp, the East was able to win their fourth straight. The co-MVPs, this guy, Billy Owens, who went on to play so well for Syracuse, and also Alonzo Morning, now at Georgetown. The East beat the West. Morning at Owens, they certainly impacted the game. And Dick Vitale, what do you think uh, recruiting-wise is going to impact this next season? Well, we know about Indiana and Georgia Tech. Villanova's got a great class coming in. Illinois, LSU, UCLA, and UNLV. But you know what? That was done before we gave that to taping. After watching O'Neal right now, I believe with Bender, Vitale, Kenny Wolf, our producer, and Dale Brown, the coach, just having O'Neal, we should make them number one. I can't go to my right, though. That's, that would probably mess that up. You can't go to your left, right, or anywhere. I watch you, you're not an old bricklayer. You're a member of my old cinder block team. <laughs> I, I brought that on myself, didn't I? Hey, Gary, Villanova's got a kid by the name of James Bright. Yeah. He's their best athlete they've recruited in terms of a big man since Eddie Pinkney played here. And then you got Lance Miller, Lloyd Mumford, Bain, and looking at also Calvin Byrd. What a class for Rolly Massimino. What's going to help UNLV is Larry Johnson coming out of the junior college ranks. Yeah, he's a man. He's ready to play in the NBA. Now, there's Hurley shooting the ball. Well, that helped him as a point guard. Let's see, Hurley, a lot of people say he's a questionable shooter, but all I know, every time I watch him play, he seems to make the big shot. Ten points for Bob Hurley, a guy, again, who practiced very little this week due to the severe hamstring problem. Baseline, and that shot will go. Allen Houston, so silky smooth, really fun to watch him play. The other end, Doug Edwards has been very quiet in this ball game. Fouled by Shaquille, and that'll be four on Shaquille. Silky smooth. I like the way you described it. You're taking some of my adjectives. He's 99, what did they say, <laughs> ivory soap smooth and pure? 99 and 44, 100. Pure. You know, when you work with you, Dick, you just change your whole personality, the way you talk. I'm starting to sound like you now. <laughs> Uh-oh. I wish I could start to look like you. <laughs> with your looks, I might make it in television. Okay, guys, one shot. All right. Edwards now at the line. He has four points, two of three from the line. Edwards really has an impact to today like I thought he would. No, he was really impressive yesterday in practice. I mean, he was dominating. In fact, a lot of people, including Bob Gibbons, when he rated his top players in the class, he had Ed Anderson one, Edwards two, O'Neal three. I would go with O'Neal one, Anderson two. How sweet he is. Nobody does it quite like this guy, Alan Houston. Just a matter of time, he's a great shooter. This time, Douglas doesn't get it to go, batted out of bounds, and it will be the West to make that the East basketball for 10-34 mark. So Hurley, one of those coaches' sons, through osmosis, they know the game so well. It's just something instinctive that happens to him. His father should be coaching in college. You talk about a guy that's a winner. He's won 13 state championships at St. Anthony. They were 32-0, and Dick, and didn't even have their own high school gym to practice in. Oh, it's an unbelievable story. And they played against team competition. They went out to play Miami senior Doug Edwards' team. They were ranked number two in the nation, and uh, that was their only loss. 35-1 and one for... Uh, Miami Senior High School. And Shaquille is fouled, and it's going to go on Doug Edwards. See, when I say he has to learn how to play, Shaquille still doesn't have inside all the kind of moves that big people, like when you look at the development now of a Patrick Ewing and a Kim Olajuwon, but that's going to come. I'm sure Dale Brown in practice and utilizing big man moves, jump rope, and all the little things is going to really see this kid's game skyrocket. Well, he's still growing. I'm sure that he's going to get bigger yet, and some of those growing pains bring about some of 
what you're just talking about. I think you're going to see Chris Jackson's game change. You're certainly not going to see the numbers out of Jackson that you saw in the past, and I think Chris will be happy with that. So he has to work with a better concentration on the free throw line on O'Neal. Houston did a good job keeping that ball active, and then Webster able to follow. 84-69, and now the West kind of getting some breathing room in this ball game. Looks like the East is going to make another move, and all of a sudden the West with Shaquille back in there is really changing, and there was some move. Edwards, we haven't talked about him not doing that much. That was a very fine move. He reminds me so much of the young version of James Worthy. That's what he's been compared by some people. Here comes Jackson. Oh, high up back to Golden. Not nice. too bad. We talked about it on the top of the show. The lost order of passing and how Jackson thinks pass rather than shot. He can shoot it. Three pointers. He can shoot it. Uh -oh. He is silky smooth. They're going to love him down in Tennessee. Oh, is he going to break some hearts? Oh, oh man. man. Play there. Wade Houston is his first head coaching job. He's got a pretty good guy to bring in there, doesn't he? And his own son. And there is Douglas. And O'Neal now has five fouls. Now you can get six, so he has one remaining. See, that's an area he has to work on also, positioning and learning how to play throughout the position. But again, we're looking at a young colt, a thoroughbred, a kid that's just learning how to play the game. Douglas to go to the line, and O'Neal will have to come out with his fifth foul. You feel O'Neal when he's in there. It's a different game for this West Club, and there's no real big surprise. He is thus far with 13 points, 13 rebounds, and six blocks. We watched Douglas score inside from out of Memphis. Somebody was telling me earlier about Hardaway. They said in a big game against the Riverside AAU team out of New York City that featured all the great New York juniors, Brian Reese, the kid by the name of Red Autry, and all their star young players. Hardaway had them talking to himself, had like about 25 points, 14 assists, a number of rebounds. He led Memphis to the win. And some people have said he's a young version of the Magic Man, about 6'7 from out of Memphis. These kids seem to get better and better every year. Well, what gets me, I have to keep reminding myself that they're 17 years old. Yeah, they really the highly specialized camp. Murray using the glass. You can play at UCLA, can't you, when you shoot them off the glass like that? Well, John Woody used to teach that. That's right. Their program. That's 10 points for Tracy Murray. Jimmy Harris brought about a new spirit down at UCLA again. They seem to be rejuvenated. There's Bird on the move off to Tracy Murray. Murray wheels in and nice touch again. Just has the mentality of a scorer. Knows how to score. Not afraid to take the shot if he misses two or three in a row. And can really flat out shoot the ball. Boy, his family are really involved in this game. His dad here, his younger brother is out here shooting baskets yesterday. They live and breathe the game of basketball. 91-76 as the West right now very much in good shape to end this four-game streak of the East. They lead the series 6-5 and won the last four. Last time the West won, they had a guy by the name of Danny. Danny in the miracle, Danny Danny. And he came here a year ago and won the national championship right in this floor, Tampa Arena. There's a drive by Butler. Boy, how quickly they forget right here in Kansas. What an unbelievable article. Karen Abort, Larry Brown today in a paper. I'll tell you, Gary, they quickly forget. Maybe Larry could get the deal to stay in San Antonio and play for the Spurs. Yeah, they up with David Robinson. Harry Bain inside. Aaron Bain now with four points in the game. Don't start that. I want to see these kids go to college. I think too many kids think about coming out too early and aren't ready for it. There's a traveling call on Mitchell Butler. In fact, I had a call the other day from a, uh, a booster, I guess, out of Michigan. He said there were rumors that Ramiro Robinson was thinking of going to the NBA draft. And again, that would be a major mistake because he can't break the top five. Yet Ramiro will make my first team All-American. Look at that drive. Oh, is that pretty? Mitchell Butler, Butler, along with Murray, will be playing for Jim Herrick next year at UCLA. Getting back to Reveal, I think that Reveal, who made my All-American preseason team for next year, along with Chris Jackson, I think Reveal's stock would go up a lot higher by remaining in school. Still remember those two free throws he hit down the stretch to win it to Seattle. We've got a timeout now. And what about that foul? What about that foul? Don't start. 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 Don't Nice work. Fuck, he's a heck of an official, though. Golden finished it up, and we have 7.36 left to go.
Well, they're still in the first round of the draft. In fact, now, our latest information, they've gone through 26 picks in the first round, and the ones that we could add would be from about the 23rd round on, or 23rd pick on, I should say. David Williams, a tackle of Florida. Tony Ricketts, an offensive tackle from Pitt. Lewis Oliver, an outstanding safety from Florida, goes to Miami, who picked it up after a trade with Chicago. As the Bears will get the Dolphins' second and third round picks, the 36th and 65th over Overall, and Cleveland Gary has gone to the Rams. I don't know about it. He can catch the football as well as run with the football. Good choice. Butler fouled as he moves inside. Now, let's go to your top ten, Mr. Vital. Oh, preseason top yes, ten. Sir. Uh oh, the running rebels. It's Stacey Altman, Mr. Defense, and now Mr. Offense, Larry Johnson. The talk will be chewing the towel. Georgetown, Illinois, Arizona, Brian Williams. Get ready, Arizona. Syracuse, Michigan, LSU. Hey, I'll tell you what. North Carolina, Indiana, and also Duke. I would have probably had Indiana number one if Jay Edwards stayed in school. Who did you pick number one preseason this year? Uh, this year we had, let me think for a moment right now. I'll tell you the truth, I don't even remember when we had Illinois. Illinois. I, I, I had so many different teams. I'm amazed. Uh, I thought you'd know that. Well, I'll tell you what, I had Duke number one. Did you? Well, that was all right. They got to the final four. Yeah. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I just remember before I had Michigan, but all year long I kept screaming at Michigan the best of Maryland in America, and nobody would listen. Yeah, but you said early yeah. here you thought they'd make it to the Final Four. Or they had potential to do that, and you knew something there. Well, There's Douglas taking a win. 96 80. Are you not supposed to put me on the spot like that? I'm supposed to rehearse. We're supposed to rehearse that stuff. No, I'm only teasing you. I'll never work with you again. I can see there right now. He <laughs> <laughs> goes face time to Cunningham, who hasn't been in there for a while, and he gets the roll. Cunningham started this game very effectively. He hasn't been in for a while, now has 10 points. Well, what I like about him, he has a variety of shots around the basket. He's so quick. What a high school he plays at out at St. Joe's, out at Westchester, down in the Chicago area. You know what he told me? He says, we are the Indiana high school basketball. We stress defense, and well, they do. They had Darrell Thomas, as I said earlier, and Isaiah Thomas came from that high school. So at the 6.32 mark, here comes a new wave of West players. Shaquille coming back in, playing with those five fouls, and Doug Edwards will check back in for the East. 98-80 is our count. Early end of the ball game, along with Bain. Bain, a three-point attempt. Aaron Bain, he's a kid we always talk about. Doesn't have the great speed, but he doesn't make a lot of mistakes on the floor, and he can shoot the basketball. Very fundamentally sound. Quiet, but when he gets on that floor, he lets his actions speak for him. Here comes Lynch. Lynch off to Hurley. Watch Hurley make the decision. Uh, thank yes. you. Bain is fouled. What a pass by Bobby Hurley. Thank you, Bob Hurley. Hey, Christian Leitner, a big guy, will be a big star next year at Gooch. And you watch as they hook up right here. Now watch Hurley make the decision right here. Takes the ball into the gun of the defense. Looks right, kicks him left. They didn't need the dribble. Should have taken it right up to the goal without the dribble. Well, you got to be alert when you play around this guy, don't you? It is this time the McDonald record held by Pearl Washington. Certainly been a real major disappointment as an nba -er. And then also tied the record of Gary Grant, who's been coming on strong with the Clippers. Also, Melvin Howard was in on that. Three of them have tied it. So Hurley has now moved into an elite group, but still 6.09 to break the record. Thomas comes down with it. Houston, there's Shaquille. Oh, boy, and he's fouled. Oh, Doug Edwards. And look at them laughing. Look at them laughing at each other. Edwards and Shaquille. <laughs> is he having fun? Look at that infectious smile on his big guy. 100 points for the West. There he goes. There's the big guy. 7 foot, 260. Up, up, and away. Slam jam bammer. That's the fifth foul, by the way, on Edwards. And Shaquille and Dale Devin, he's still smiling as he retreats defensively. You know, it's really going to be such a good situation for Chris Jackson, and he's not going to be counting on to get 35 and 40 every night. He can really enjoy playing because Jackson's able to pass the ball better than people believe. And some pushing and shoving going on, and finally Edwards brings it down. Edwards is going to be a force. I believe he's going to go to Florida State. Some say maybe Florida is going to sneak in and get him, but I think he'll go to Florida State. I really do. He also mentioned he was thinking about Louisville, North Carolina State. 
North Carolina State, and also he said North Carolina. How easy is that? Come on, Doug, you have to know your choice by now. I mean, they make it, they tell you how tough it is on the kids. What about the toughness on the coaches that have to sweat it out? Douglas will check back in a moment for the East as we have 535 left in the game. Deion Thomas will lean in. He doesn't miss very many of those. And Houston almost came up with a steal. Here comes Hurley to Faulkner. If that had gone, that would have broken the record of nine and six. Notice now he really always knows where people are on the floor and always seems to make that intelligent decision of giving the ball up. Fun to watch him play. You know, there's a lot of things to this game, the scoring, the rebounding, but boy, to see somebody that can pass the ball, set things up like Hurley does, that is an art form that you just never want to see leave this game, and he's going to really resurrect that for Duke. Quinn Snyder leading, he'll step right in and play there. Boy, Krzyzewski's going to have some ball club as now Winstrom comes back in, and O'Neal checks out. I think you look at the decision right here. He only stops at the foul line. He makes the decision at the free throw line. He has a good angle on the entry to either cutter. He doesn't over penetrate. Bob Hurley, a winner with a capital W. He's so resourceful. No wasted energy, wasted motion. He just gets it there. Faulkner checks out. Douglas checks in. 5.27. I want to take this opportunity to say hello to a very fine young lady. And this lady has been a public relations uh, person for McDonald's, working out of the Chicago area, resting comfortably from surgery. Kate Lewandowski. Kate, we miss you. Hope to see you in Rome when we get there for the McDonald's game there. We've all missed you, and uh, just get well. She's a beautiful lady. Went to Marquette University. Got the chance to meet her previously, and has done a solid job with the McDonald's game. So we'll uh, see you soon. Kate, just get well. Now we have 5.04 left. Robinson puts one up from three-point land, and Lynch tries to come up with it. Whose ball is it? Lynch has one of those stoic looks. Never shows a lot of emotion, but plays very hard. Now there, we know Wooden, but what about Wooden? Not too bad. Mr. High School and Mr. College. I guess you look at both those guys, you're looking at a lot of wings, but class as well. Morgan Wooten on the right. An unbelievable winner at the Massa High School. Danny Ferry, Adrian Dantley. The list goes on and on. Little Wenstrom. Great check. George Lynch says, get it out of here, Wenstrom. He said, that's my future teammate. We're going to play together at North Carolina. He should do that to me. Come on, George. Give me a break. 101 to 88. Robinson now brings it off to Houston. Winstrom playing in there now with Shaquille out with five fouls, taking a breather. There's Thomas missing again. Coming out with it is Edwards. Off to McCaffrey. Changed his shot because of Winstrom and Edwards follows. Now, Edwards, late his game now, starting to impact it a little bit. Well, he's starting to show his multidimensional talent, especially around the basket. He's so effective as an excellent touch. He'll be a great collegiate. They don't need those kind of shots that quickly with a lead like they have. Robinson putting it up from three-point land. 101 to 90 on the move as Lynch changed the shot, and he's fouled by Houston. Oh, uh, Lynch trying to be a little acrobatic. He was waiting for them to give him four points for that. He figured the degree of difficulty. Well, you know, this is no surprise, Dick, but the shot clock has not been a factor today. <laughs> Does that really shock you? <laughs> I was just thinking that when Robinson put up that long three-pointer, I know Orley's probably said to himself, all my years of coaching, I've never had a player do that. But there's still a little showtime going on out here. Oh, a lot of showtime. It's party time. These kids have really enjoyed the week. They get involved in so many activities. Bob Yagan has done a great job over the years with the McDonald's game, he and his staff. And they make it more than just a basketball game. They have an educational process here for the youngsters as well. And not only that, but McDonald's, I think, has to haul in some extra beef because those Big Macs really went in a hurry this week with these guys. They can put it away. You know, Gary, I think these kids are going to face four new phases of their life in entering college that are really going to be essential in their development if they're to make it. One, they're going to have to learn how to blend. They're going to have to be blenders playing with other great talent. Two, expectations. Every one of them are going to be anticipated to do well immediately. They're going to have to really work toward that as Murray hits the jump shot. Number three, media criticism for the first time in their life. People now scrutinizing their every move, dealing with criticism. And number four, academic adaptability, getting ready to act academically for a new life. Some kids can't deal with it. 
Murray misses here after hitting the other side. Boy, he has a picturesque shot, doesn't he? Here comes McCaffrey. Watch him go up. And he is fouled. A foul going on Greg Graham. Not a good decision by McCaffrey taking the ball to the goal right then. He should have driven the little bounce pass to a cutter. You know, you were pointing out those points. They're very, very good ones. It's interesting how much longer the college season is than high school. That's a real problem. And the kids get tired. Oh, physically. But I really believe the biggest problem for many of them, and then we see the drug scene and many of the other problems, alcohol, is that sometimes these kids can't live up to all the so-called adulation and all the so-called publicity and notoriety, and they can't deal with it. And then also, many of them have been option number one. Now they go to college, and they have to blend. When a McGray walks on a Syracuse campus, Billy Owens and Derek Coleman don't care he's a high right. school player. So now he's not option number one any longer. How he handles that really is relevant to his development as a person. So we have a break in the action. 3.32. We're going to look at this break down the floor. Caffrey able to score. Right still on top, 103 to 94. <laughs> 103 94, the 12th annual McDonald's All American Basketball Game. Kemper Arena in Kansas City. Gary Bender, Dick Vitale, and Cheryl Miller. And coming up, the Chrysler Cup Cup. Arnold Palmer, among others. Chi Rodriguez, Miller Barber for the U.S. team, the international team, headed by Gary Player and Roberto DiPotenzo. $600,000 in prize money. I wonder if this guy can play golf. He's done everything else. Are you on yeah. I can't wait to see that hook up the tandem of Robert from seven feet because he was very impressive having last year several all-star games and watching a Roberts and an O'Neill play together inside. They see Murray traps in the backcourt. Now, you can do that in the last five minutes of a game. That's one of the rules. You can start trapping. And the foul going on the west. Tracy Murray. McCaffrey with that good steal. Explodes down the lane. He's got the great legs and the jumping ability. Coach Orlich is getting a little nervous right now. He wants that W. You know what? Coach Orlich comes from a family of coaches. His dad, one time, was coaching in California. The center was John Madden. Wow, John Madden, the white body? The, hey, he looks so slim and trim there. Unbelievable. You talk about dads that are coaching. I found out your dad is in the Hall of Fame in Kansas for That's coaching. Right. He's a coach. I didn't know that. He used to come into Kansas City. I saw the a uh, lot of the Final Four games. He used to hold them all here in Kansas City. Back John Wooden's first national championship team in 64. Walt Hazard and Gail Goodrich came in here. Dodge City Community College is yep. where he coached. The Conquistadors. 103 to 95, and the East hasn't given up in this ball game. Oh, nice pass. Jackson. Jackson with the great catch. This game isn't over. 103 to 97. The East has all of a sudden clawed back. Well, and you know, there's another turnover. You know what's happened right now? Because trapping is permitted late in the game. The West is without a legitimate point guard. And this was the one area they were concerned about in the early part of the game when trapping was not permitted. It didn't become a dilemma. There's a look at Bob Gibbons. Look at him trying to coach there. Bob Gibbons was keeping the substitution straight. Look at that one-two combination. John Wooden, Morgan Wood. Well, all of a sudden now, the East, using the trap, as you can use that in the last five minutes of the ball game, have stormed back, and now they're within six points. With 3 on 9 left to go, the East has the basketball. McRae backing on O'Neal. He has five fouls. Has to be careful. Houston comes out of there with it. You think they want to start taking some time off the clock. Yeah, yeah they haven't done that yet. We were both thinking the same thing when he started moving inside. 2.50 left in the game. Shaquille backs in and backs it in and down and through. Nice little setup right there. Go down into the big fella. Good entry into the box. Catches it, turns. Nice little touch. Shaquille with 18 points and almost got a block followed by Jackson. McCaffrey did a good job getting that ball over O'Neal. He wasn't afraid of it. McCaffrey and Hurley playing together right now. West has called timeout. They couldn't get the ball in, and the five-second count had started. And so the West now a little shaky as they lead in this ball game by six points. You know, you talk about a Shaquille O'Neal. He has 18 points in this game. You know, in one game, he had 36 rebounds and 26 blocks. I can't imagine anybody in the length of time a high school game is 
able to accomplish that. 32 minutes. Oh, we really missed watching Kenny Anderson play and all the beautiful fans who are with us. Yeah, I'm just interested as well because he would have been some kind of treat. Kenny Anderson is out with an ankle injury. The kid's going to Georgia Tech. And believe me, he's had reams and reams of publicity. And everybody says, really, he can live up to it all. Again, the Chrysler golf coming up. Talking about Kenny Anderson, he tried desperately yesterday to get ready. He came out here, tried to backpedal and uh, run, and it just wasn't going to happen. Dick, uh, very reminiscent of your days as a coach. I get a kick out of coaches. They draw all these X's and O's scribbling all over the place, and many times the kids can't read what they're saying. I love Dale Brown in the huddle. He's the only guy in the world who could be down 36 with 30 seconds on the clock and still believe he could win. By the way, timeouts. East has three left. The West has only one timeout left with 227 left in this game. Did it post someone up? Good execution against the trap. They need to milk the clock now. Take some time off the clock with now 2.14 left in this game. 28 seconds on the shot clock. Houston ducks in, and that was not what they needed. And the ball is saved by Jackson off to McCaffrey. And McCaffrey scores, and the East now is within four points. McCaffrey just knows how to get free. I watch him try to invite him into a trapping area. And Thomas is fouled by Jackson. Jackson reaching around on Deion Thomas. Jackson, look at that body. Oh, is he going to fit in perfectly down at Ohio State? Well, they are going to need him. They lose White and Francis and Burson. Some talk about Eli Brewster not coming back. Eli Brewster has been a disappointment, and I really have my doubts whether or not he'll ever be the kind of player they really anticipated. Dominated on a high school level, but just doesn't look confident with the basketball at all. I think Craig Lee will be a big-time player before his career is over. That was the first miss of the game from the free throw line by Thomas. He's been 4-4. Four four. And now it's a four-point game, and maybe two, as McRae can't get it to go. O'Neal and Thomas were fighting each other. O'Neal goes down, and he travels. It looked like he was knocked to the deck. He took a right hand like a Michael Tyson and went to the deck. It's like a big tree when he fell down that time. Lynch will come back in for the East, and now coming back in will be Mitchell Butler for the West. Look at it again. Man, that uh, scares you for a little bit. Somebody bent backwards like that. Jackson missing, and Shaquille's got the rebound anyway. Got to keep the ball up and get it out quickly to the guards. 15 rebounds for Shaquille, and oh. they're trying to draw the charges. Jackson, they got to spread the court, get a little more balance. There that was a fine pass by Houston. Allen Houston with the tremendous look, the diagonal pass. Deion Thomas closes it out and finalizes it. Early from three, rebound Butler again. Mitchell Butler in all kinds of trouble. There's four men in the defensive end now. They're going to have to hustle back. Thomas off to Houston, and a basket will count and a blocking foul on Hurley. They're not thinking about running off any clock, Gary. They're pushing the ball up the court. Coach Horlis loves it, says good job as they push the ball down the floor. Houston made several really big plays. It's so hard to get the these guys not to want to take the ball to the hole and not shoot it. Orlick was telling me when they came in, they needed a basketball for every player. <laughs> they reversed the action right there, Gary. Instead of Houston hitting Deion Thomas, it was the reverse. Houston was on the final end of it, catching it, squaring his body and scoring. Houston now with 14 points in the game. So they kind of oh, fast steal Ooh. this big challenge of the East with 58 seconds left. It's back to a nine-point lead. Jackson from three. O'Neal with another rebound, his 16th of the ball game. Bring it out, bring it out, bring it out. Well, they have the ability to get it in the hole. What were you saying? They don't want to bring it out, they want to bring it home. This is fun time, baby. Run, baby, run. And at the other end, Jackson. Barnes comes down with it. And finally, it's going to be knocked out of bounds. It'll be the East ball. My MVP, I don't think there's any doubt. No. It's got to go to the big guy. Shaquille. I think Shaquille. I liked him in the early interview when he pointed. I said, where are you going to play with Roberts? He's not pointing. He'll be on one side. I'll be on the other side. <laughs> I bet Dale Brown had to laugh if he was watching. He's already coaching Coach Brown. <laughs> 
Boy, Chris Jackson, a delightful young guy. Shaquille to join that. They're going to have some quality people down in Baton Rouge. Remember John Williamson, a great player, yeah. played in the ABA. His son will be eligible, and they say he is some kind of squirrel. Thomas will kick it back outside as we go to the last 15 seconds of this 12th annual McDonald's All-American. And Greg Graham followed by Thomas. He's got it early on the move. You know, this will be the first time. I just thought of this. This will be the first time that Hurley is going to go to the locker room with an L this year. That's right. Because this team won in the Copper Dan. They won here. I mean, they won 32 in a row as a team. St. Anthony's, this will be the first time he walks in the locker room with a loss. Well, Shaquille left that charge for the West. 18 points, 16 rebounds, 6 block shots. And uh, some guys who made some classy friendships this week going after each other and congratulating each other. This is beautiful to see. They read about each other. They really get a chance now to play head-to-head -head against each other after getting so much publicity and meeting. And it's been a really tremendous week for these kids. The MVP award is named after John Wooden, and it'll be announced. We're going to take a break here, and we're going to update you on the Chrysler Golf Cup, which will be coming up to seniors who play so very, very well. But the final here, Tom Orlich's West team with a 112 to 103 victory in the 12th Annual Classic. And so the announcement being made here, the most valuable player is going to be Bobby Hurley, and Hurley with the assists in this ball game, his outstanding play, and that's for the East. That's the East MVP. And here comes the West MVP, as we anticipated, Shaquille O'Neal. That's no surprise. Hurley with the assist today, tying the record, and here comes the 6 11 giant. Look at the crowd, they love it. Shaquille O'Neal, most valuable player. A PCP here, baby, a prime time performer. Woo! A six-footer and a seven-footer representing this 12th annual McDonald's All-American game. And the guy in the middle, John Wood, you should know who should be MVP. He's a Rolls Royster, the guy in the middle, the greatest coach in the history of coaching. We're going to be back with some final thoughts here from Kemper in Kansas City. But right now, coming up, the Chrysler Golf Cup. Right now, let's go for a report. Let's join Jack Whitaker. They say it's all right. They say it's all right. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Everybody knows that it's all right. Whoa, it's all right. 